Hi there, I hope you're well. Released today in Elementor Pro 1.8 is a brand new mobile responsive navigation menu widget. Uh, it's a very much requested feature. I've had a chance to play with it and it's fantastic. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the new Elementor nav menu widget. Let's check it out. There are lots of cases where it's great to be able to build your own custom responsive menus. And with this new widget, the sky's the limit, both in terms of design control and in terms of where you can place your menus. And as a designer, that's the dream, right? Now, of course, the widget isn't limited only to main navigation menus either. It can be used for any menu or list of links that you can think of anywhere on your site, within content, within sidebars, within footers, horizontal menus, vertical menus, even menus that are always a mobile hamburger icon, even on large screens. As the nav menu widget is an Elementor Pro feature, I'll assume you have Elementor Pro throughout this tutorial. If you don't have Pro, there's a link below this video that will take you right there to check it out. Now that link is an affiliate link, so if you buy Pro after clicking it, I get a commission. So by all means, feel free to bypass me and go straight to elementor.com slash pro. Right, let's dig into how to use the new nav menu widget. If you saw my custom header tutorial a few months ago, you might recognize this custom header I created. Now, now that we can use a native Elementor widget for the navigation, I thought it'd be nice to take up where we left off. So here, I'm just editing a template in my Elementor template library, which is using the Elementor canvas template. Just a simple one column section with a brown background. Then I dragged in a columns widget for these three columns, social icons widget here, an icon list widget here, and an image widget here. Now I want my nav menu to run horizontally full width under the header with a slightly darker background color than the main header area. So I'll add new section, choose one column. Now in the section style tab, I'll choose a dark brown for the background, which fills the entire width. Now we come up to our widget chooser menu here, down to the pro elements, and here's the new nav menu widget. So we'll just drag it in. The widget is pulling in my primary menu, which I've created in WordPress already in appearance menus. So I've just created a new menu, gave it a name, and then dragged in the pages from this list of pages into the menu and then saved it. I and mean, this is how you create menus in WordPress anyway, it's standard stuff. Notice I've also indented some pages, so we have a subnav of a few pages under products. Okay, back to the editor. Now this yellowy link color is automatically coming from my themes customizer styles. It's the color that I've got set for links. I personally have Elementor's global colors turned off in Elementor settings, which lets my themes colors shine through. In the widget settings, we've got three tabs, content, style, and advanced. Now first, it looks like Elementor Pro sets the nav menu links to be 13 pixels size by default at the moment, which is a bit too small for this design. So before anything else, I'll quickly come to style. Now notice here, we can style the main menu, the drop down, and the mobile menu toggle icon. I'll focus on the main menu now. So back to main menu, turn the typography on, and that will allow me to bump the font size up to 16 pixels. While we're here, let's also go uppercase and font weight 600. I'll come back to the style tab in a moment, tweak colors, etc. But first, let's, let's see what we have under the content tab. So layouts, we have horizontal, vertical, or drop down. Now I actually want horizontal for this menu, but vertical would be great for footer menus or menus in sidebars, or you know, even down the left side of the page is the main navigation. And drop down, genius. Now this gives you the option of a mobile menu at all screen sizes. So that's perfect if you don't have much space for a menu, you can just have the mobile menu for, for everything. I'll switch that back to horizontal. Align, just left, center, right, or even stretch, which evenly stretches the menu items out. But I'll go with center for this. 
Pointer just means the style that you see when you hover over the links. And this works in conjunction with the animation settings here. So each pointer has its own set of animations appropriate to each pointer. It's a little hard to see right now with the default colors. I'll fix that soon. And also the blue frame of the widgets in the way a bit. But apart from opting to have no pointer at all, you have underline, which by default, it just fades in, but you've got other animation options like slide. There's overline. Now overline places a line at the top instead. That has the same set of animations as underline. You've got double line, which is a line at the top and the bottom. You have framed. Now framed is a box around the links and framed has its own unique set of animations such as draw. Background, with background the pointer covers the whole background. So, and background has a whole load of interesting animations available. And then there's text. Now, why text? You would think that that might be the same as no pointer effect at all, but actually no, because text has its own list of animations like grow, shrink, sync, float, skew, rotate. And there's lots of fun to be had with those, which I'll, I'll leave to you. Um, I'm gonna go with background for this site with the default fade animation. Now I'll fix the colors in the style tab in a moment. Sub menu indicator, we have four options here. I quite like the chevron. And then still in layout, under the mobile dropdown. So here you can set the screen width breakpoint that will drop to the mobile menu icon instead of the standard menu. Now of course, if we chose the dropdown layout back up here, then these options just disappear. So with tablet selected as the breakpoint, I'll switch to tablet preview mode. And there's our mobile menu. But now let's change the breakpoint to mobile. So now we still have our standard menu at tablet size. So we now have to flick to the mobile preview to see the mobile menu. Now these breakpoints are set in accordance with Elementor's standard breakpoints that it has for columns and everything else. So I'll come back to tablet mode. I'll switch breakpoint back to tablet, just partly because it's easier to see what's happening in this video. Now the full width setting is superb. If you notice with it off, if I click the menu icon, then the menu only stretches as far as the column that it's in. But if I switch full width on, then you get a true completely full width menu. Now this is especially great if your normal menu doesn't go full width. I'll just quickly flick over to this very quick mock-up I made. But the mobile version of your menu can still be full width, even though your menu didn't stretch full width. With Align, you can set whether the mobile menu links are over to the left or centered. You notice, by the way, that our pointer on mobile is now a background hover. So it's very clear and obvious feedback on smaller touch screens. Toggle allows you to set what the toggle icon is. Right now, you have a choice of either none or burger, which is the, the hamburger icon. I think that's so you can turn the menu off on mobile completely if you want to. Um, we can style the icon further in the style tab soon. So we're not stuck with this color or size. And toggle align simply lets you place the toggle icon where you want it. Now it makes sense centered for this, but if I come over to my alternative design again, flick to tablet mode, I'd likely want to right align my toggle icon. Now note that the toggle appears wherever you place the normal menu. You can't yet place it somewhere else. Maybe that'll be a future feature. So back to our edit screen and back to desktop view. Okay, that's layout sorted. So time to preview. And that's not bad so far. So let's tweak a bit further. Now we'll come over to the style tab. Now remember here we can style the main menu, the drop down for sub nav menus and the mobile toggle icon. So main menu first. To the menu item, we can set text color for normal, hover and active states. Now normal, I'm happy to leave, but you could set a color here that's different to your default links color. 
Hover, I'd like to set my pointer color. Now remember my pointer is background. I'd like to set that to the same yellow as my text. And then set the text to be the same color as the background. So we just get a reversed out effect. Now active is the color each menu item will be if it's the current page. So if we're on the history page, we can set how the history link will be highlighted as the current item. I'm going to leave these alone. They default to the hover settings, which is what I'm going to leave these on. And I'm happy for those to be highlighted like this. Typography, I turned on earlier. So all this right down to letter spacing is from typography. Horizontal padding is the amount of space inside each menu item. So if I set that to zero, whoosh, okay. Now it's easier to see if I hover. There's no horizontal padding inside each item at all. Now I actually quite like the default, but let's go for 16 pixels. Vertical padding is the same, but vertically. So set that to zero, then hover. There's no space above or below. So I'll make that something like 13. Now that's better. Now space between is the amount of space between each item, not inside. So if I set that to zero, well actually nothing happens. So the space between each item so far is actually just created by the horizontal padding inside. So if I set this to a bigger number like 50, now you can see each item is 50 pixels apart as well as the horizontal padding inside each item. I'm quite happy for the only space to be the padding inside, so I'm just going to set that to zero. And border radius is just nice rounded corners for the pointer if you want them. Now notice each one of these controls also allows you to have a different setting for desktop and tablet, but not mobile, because it's assumed that you won't see your standard menu at mobile size anyway. Right, I'll collapse the main menu and quickly look at the drop down options. So I've got a drop down sub menu here. Just be aware that the styles you set for the sub menu drop downs like this also affect your mobile menu too. It's actually the same controls. So I'll have the same background color as the section background and I'll choose yellow text and check the drop down. Now on hover, I don't want the default gray. So let's go with a nice rich yellow background and our dark brown text. I'm going to turn typography on. Now it seems at the moment, whether by design or a bug, that the typography settings don't affect the drop down menu on desktop. It just takes the typography that you set for the parent menu. But I do want access to the responsive controls here to set the styles for the mobile menu drop down in a moment. So I'll leave typography on. Just go past typography. I'll leave these padding settings at the default. They look good to me, but you can tweak those like you can for the main menu. You can set a divider between each item if you like. So I could set solid, um, a lighter color, border width one, and then let's make this color a bit more transparent to blend in. And that's not bad. I mean, actually I'd prefer it with no divider. So I'll just set border type back to none. Distance is how far the drop down menu is away from the main menu. So by default, it's right next to it. But I'll drag this slider all the way to the top to 100, then hover. So that's 100 pixels from the top. And you can go negative two, pulling it up. I'm just gonna delete that anyway, because I'm, I'm happy with that. Now I did say that the drop down settings affect the mobile drop down too. So let's just change to tablet preview mode. I prefer a couple of tweaks, so back to typography. And I'll choose uppercase. For the font weight, I'll go 600. And size, maybe 15. All right, so that's main menu and drop down styles. Finally, to the toggle. Now the icon is already yellow because I chose my drop down text to be yellow. You can override that here. So I'll go with this paler beige color. 
You can pop a background on it if you like. So I can add a yellow background. Now I'll clear that because I'm happy with it as it is. Hover, now let's make it yellow. I'd like it a bit more noticeable. So I'll bump the size up to 30. Border width allows you to have a border. And border radius, you set rounded corners for either your border or your background. So I could come back to normal. I could add a yellow background color and then increase the border radius a bit. And I could even set the border radius to be 50% and then we have a circle. And I could increase the border width to add a border around it I and mean, all sorts of possibilities. Uh, let's just save that now. So back to desktop and preview. Let's have a little hover. That's not too bad. I would prefer these uh, menu items to actually fill the section. So the gaps at the top and the bottom are actually coming from my column gap settings for this sections column. So just to get rid of that, I'll edit the section. And then over here in the settings, I'll set columns gap to no gap. Preview that again. That's not bad. So now we just need a bit more vertical padding inside each item. So back to our widget settings in style, right down to vertical padding. I'll try 18. Preview that again. Yeah, and that's a lot better. So that's the new nav menu widget in Elementor Pro. So just one idea for a use for this. I mean, how about creating two menus? So you could create two menus, call them primary left and primary right. Then you could place one on the left side of the logo and one on the right. And as I've mentioned, you can create vertical menus in your content, sidebars, footers. There are all sorts of possibilities. Really great stuff. If you found this video useful, subscribe to my YouTube channel to be informed when I've got new tutorials out. Please like the video and drop me a comment below. Now my email subscribers get all my best stuff, access to exclusive offers and courses and things like that. So to be in on that, go to my website, designbuildweb.co slash my best stuff. Sign up and I'll keep you informed. Thanks very much.